Hello and welcome to the GeoRGB community. The other day I was taking a walk at the Golden Bar Park in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada and I saw a very interesting rock located next to the path that called my attention. I believe the rock was placed there for someone, however, in this area there are a lot of till deposits and it is possible to find clay with big blocks of rock like this one. As you can see, I am talking about a metamorphic rock, specifically a rock classified as a nice. This rock is telling us a very unique history, very special because its geological complexity structure. We can see a remarkable discontinuity at the middle that divides the rocks into different parts. One is totally deformed with a lot of faults and the other one it's not. However, the most interesting thing is that the rock is showing the same mineralogy in both parts, quartz, biotite and further spots, indicating that the original rock in both parts was a granite. For me, the most mysterious thing on this rock is how we can explain this discontinuity without having any contact metamorphic aureole how we can have a granite that is totally deformed and then, at the top, another granite without any type of deformation or alteration of its texture. We have to understand that in order to get a metamorphic rock like this one, with this grade of deformation, we need to have very high pressure and also very high temperature. In contrast, in order to have a granite, we need a magma to get cold very slow. The point is how we can mix these two different geological conditions to have a rock like this one. Maybe you can have an explanation. Please leave your thoughts, your opinion at the comment section. In this video, I will try to explain all the geological process of this rock. Let's start. We are going to start this history at the magma chamber where depending on the composition of the magma, when it gets cold, it can form a granite. Then we are going to have something like this one. This is an example. And here what we have is the Axiens magma chamber rebelled in El Capitan rocks in Jemesai National Park in California. This is a big mountain and it is a massive granite. Then if we make a zoom in this area, for example, five centimeters by five centimeters, what we are going to get is something like that. This is a typical granite where the most common minerals are going to be feldspats, biotite and quartz. And we can recognize these minerals pretty easy without using any type of uh, magnifier because the minerals are quite big. In this image, the black ones are the biotite and they are pretty characteristic. Then the transparent or the translucent uh, crystals are associated with the quartz and the white one are the feldspats. And you can see all these minerals pretty easy because of their dimensions. Then if we take an area here of one centimeter by one centimeter and then make a section that is very, very thin, thin enough to allow the light to pass uh, through the minerals and then make a zoom of 10 times, what we are going to see is something like that. That is the granite at the microscope. And then here what we have is this green and brown colors. These are the biotite. Then we have the gray colors with this kind of lines inside this type of uh, structure. And this one are the further spots. Also, we have the translucent minerals where we cannot see any type of uh, structure inside. 
also this type of gray over here these ones and all these ones over here they are crystals of quartz and it's pretty easy to identify all these minerals with the microscope and this one is the typical texture of a granite and it is the texture that we are going to find in this part of the rock However, in the other section, we are going to find something different. Let's go to move to the next uh, picture over here. As you can see here, we have an areas where the minerals are classified. Here, what we have is the biotite. And here, what we have is the feldespats with the quartz. Then when we have a uh, pressure on the rock, the minerals are going to reorganize inside of the rock and they are going to create these bands where we are going to have bands with a dark color associated with the biotite and bands with clear colors associated with the quartz and with the feldspars. Here we have another example where we can see also what is the preferent uh, direction of the minerals in this direction also we can see the bands of uh, biotite feldspats with quartz and um, biotite again and we can see these bands here when the granite is exposed to high pressure and temperature it makes these bands with clear colors associated with the quartz and feldspats and dark bands associated with the biotite then we have to uh, assume that at the beginning our granite was uh, suffering a lot of pressure due to different uh, geological uh, process then after that pressure these bands were created where we have a reorganization of the minerals inside of the rock then we have this one at the front of the rock here these uh, parallel bands and also at the right side of the rock we have again these uh, parallel uh, bands but then after creating these parallel bands if the pressure comes from the lateral what we are going to have is a deformation of these parallel bands in something like that where these bands started to get curved due to a lateral pressure like this one. We can see that one at the front of the rock and also at the right side. As you can see, this one over here. The characteristics are the same, right? It is uh, bands with uh, clear colors and dark colors, okay? We can recognize also this type of structure, the uh, parallel bands and curved bands at the back of the rock, as you can see over here. Parallels and curve over here. Then all these structures is associated with the metamorphic uh, process with high pressure and also uh, high temperature, okay? Where the minerals are going to be reorganized inside of the rock. Even sometimes they can get uh, partially dissolved and then recrystallize again. Okay. Then the statues that we have at the moment is the magma. Then the magma get cold and form the granite. Then we have a geological process that produce the metamorphic process in this rock and then we started to create these bands, the parallel ones and then the these ones that are kind of curve and then the next process in this rock is the formation of a uh, beans okay this one over here is the next step in this process okay and this is a kind of fracture in the rock and then this fracture is filled with the fluids that are circulating inside these fractures okay and the composition of these uh, fluids could be a mix of the dissolve of these minerals and also other fluids okay but as these veins or fractures uh, are cutting the parallel bands we have to assume that it happens 
after the formation of the bands for both type of bands, right? The parallels and the curved ones. Then the next step in this history is the discontinuity, okay? We have the discontinuity over here with an orange line and this discontinuity is pretty evident, okay? And it's a type of discontinuity associated with a metamorphic rock with an igneous rock. However, it is pretty interesting to see that here we don't have any contact uh, metamorphic aureole okay because you have to think that in order to get this granite you need very high temperature okay and that temperature is going to affect the metamorphic rock then we are going to have here a transition okay and in this type of rock we cannot see any transition okay we can see something different here but it's it is not clear right i'm looking for to have here a big transition due to the high temperature for the formation of the granite okay but in this rock i cannot see it, that one looks like the transition from the metamorphic rock to the igneous rock it's a very clean cut right looks like there is no transition between both also we don't know what type of discontinuity is this one right we don't know if that one it was a fault that breaks the the rock it was because maybe the metamorphic rock was exposed to the erosion we don't know what is the type of discontinuity between these two rocks even we don't know what is the gap of time between both of them right could be millions of years right the differences between the ages of this rock and this rock at the end we have a lot of unknown things with this rock right and the contact between these two type of uh, rocks then the next step is to see the this discontinuity at the right side of the rock that is also pretty evident and also at the back as you can see here with the orange line and now we are going to see the last step and the last step is associated with another fracture and this one is the last one okay as you can see is this green line over here and here we can see the fracture and the fracture uh, breaks uh, both uh, different rocks right the metamorphic and the granite and it is indicating that it was the last event okay and also we have this fracture that goes around all the rock right this is the the right side and this one is the back of the rock we have here also from here to here over this area it's now pretty evident in the picture but it was there right and one pretty interesting thing is that the composition of the minerals here i mean not the composition the texture of the minerals and the color and edc it's pretty similar in this bin than in this one okay they are pretty similar but we have to assume that it happens in different moments but they are pretty similar okay well that's the end of this video hopefully you enjoy the the mysterious history of a granite and if you can uh, say something about what you think happens here it could be pretty interesting right because i'm not specialized in metamorphic or igneous rock even less in the type of uh, discontinuities but i believe it's something pretty interesting and i believe this rock is pretty unique okay i never see something like that and that's the reason because i decided to do this video okay thank you very much for watching and see you on the next one